This week, a special edition of Marketplace Middle East. The worst is bar, passed by, and now we are looking forward for the next growth. And we have to be ready for it. What's ahead for Dubai? A frank interview with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is next. Six months ago, Dubai rocked the world with its debt crisis. Since then, it has restructured $23.5 billion of Dubai world's debt and is now working through other holdings. This is the post-crisis story, but Dubai's pre-crisis story is well over two decades old. From having the region's largest airport, the largest airline, and the largest trade port, Dubai created a name for itself in finance, tourism, and logistics. The person in charge is Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. I caught up with him on his annual trip to Royal Ascot. An afternoon at the races at Royal Ascot with one of the most familiar faces at the fixture. Now we go into this paddock. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and his wife Princess Haya are dedicated equestrians. The ruler of Dubai and Prime Minister of the UAE had 27 horses running this year from his stable Godolphin. We viewed the first race from his private box above the finish line. The winner was not wearing the blue silks of his stable, but the victory stayed in the family. The Philly rainfall set a course record in the Jersey Stakes, owned by his son, Crown Prince Sheikh Hamdan. Well done. The royal family is in familiar territory. The winner's paddock to collect the prize. The colorful festivities of Royal Ascot seem a world away from the challenges back home. The Emirate is six months into an across-the-board restructuring of Dubai World, and many brands under Dubai Holding, the investment vehicle in which Sheikh Mohammed holds majority stakes. At the same time, the carrier of Dubai, Emirates Airlines, just placed another colossal $11.5 billion plane order, after passenger growth of 21% last year and profits of nearly a billion dollars. In a wide-ranging 20-minute interview, we discussed the task of rebuilding brand Dubai, a challenge the Dubai leader is taking head-on. You have to create space for yourself, and what you have to do, people have vision, and some will be running only in his small vision and small uh, safety zone. And we have a vision to be number one, so our airlines or horses or whatever it is. If you do it well and you have your vision, that you can, uh, you can establish. I was looking back, two months after 9-11, you put a plane order in for $15 billion, and then six months after the restructuring started during this banking crisis, you put a giant $11 billion order in for planes. You obviously are trying to mark your territory in the airline space and be bold about it. I think uh, it is opportunities. You know, you have to grab the opportunity and not to lose the opportunity for another opportunity. Therefore, I think the Emirates Airlines gave an order after uh, 11 September because that was an opportunity. And uh, now, because of the growth of the airport growth and the passenger growth and the tourist growth, I think that's why they order this uh, more. I think they will have to order some more in uh, the air show in uh, Farnborough. So uh, another large order in July is what you're saying? I think, I think they, they will have to because, they, they know, the growth, the way I see the growth in, the, in Dubai airport and UAE is, uh, is, is very, very big. Listening to you, you don't seem to share any of the concerns, for example, that the International Monetary Fund has about a persisting recession in Dubai and throughout the region. Well, I think the recession is all over the world. And I don't call it a recession, I call it a challenge. Every day was a challenge to us. A challenge to find the water, a challenge to find a, uh, a meal, a challenge to... Every day a challenge. Life will be boring if there is no challenge. Or we call it recession, or we call it whatever you call it. No, Dubai and uh, UAE, Abu Dhabi, and the rest of the Emirates are uh, fine. You know, we know it is a recession, we know it is a challenge, and we're dealing with it. How did the global restructuring and the crisis that faced Dubai redefined the relationship within the UAE and specifically the relationship with Abu Dhabi. The relationship between Dubai and Abu Dhabi, both ruling family is from the same tribe. 
So we are one family. And UAE is not only Abu Dhabi and Dubai. There is other five other Emirates. And we all look after each other. We are one nation and we are one country and one president. If we can delve into this a little bit more, after what we've seen in the last six months, will additional external support be necessary in this restructuring that's taking place? Restructuring is the company are restructuring because it is a new world. I'm not worried about the company. The company, you know, got a world. They have something and they will come back very, very, very quickly. But the relationship is, is, is very good between the uh, Emirates. And uh, we have a challenge now to bring the other Emirates in, in line with the Abu Dhabi and Dubai. It's not only me as a chairman or, or a ruler or a prime minister. No, there is a team behind us. The worst is ba passed by, and now we are looking forward for the next growth. And we have to be ready for it, you know, and take opportunity and, and, and uh, you know, get in before the rest of the world. Everything we started, we're going to finish. Maybe some project that we we're thinking of it or in the, in the books that might delay for six months, eight months, one year, but uh, the rest is going forward. You don't seem overly concerned about the restructurings that need to take place in the future. We've reached a bottom. You think we can move forward with no real hurdles to cross in the future? We're already moving forward. The structure is ready. You know, bridges, roads, uh, tunnels, everything. We, we don't have now to build so we are ready now to move forward with the country. So you have an advantage with infrastructure. How do you protect these sectors from the competing states around you, like Qatar or Saudi Arabia or even Abu Dhabi, that have energy resources that you don't have? Abu Dhabi is my country, and, and Qatar is my neighbor. And Saudi Arabia, I wish them a good luck, and I will help. Even if I can, if they ask me, I will help to, for their growth. Because we need, the whole area need to grow already, not only uh, United Arab Emirates. Because you've created a fourth trading hub. Most people thought of Asia, Europe, and the United States in the past, but you personally have helped define what the Middle East stands for. But should there be greater unification? We understand that the power is shifting, so therefore we have to be ready for it. If I'm looking at the market of the Middle East, of a market of 300 million people, and then you have the Gulf states trying to create a single currency. Are you a supporter of the single currency in that process? The euro is in, in, in trouble, and uh, we thought of the Gulf currency, and uh, we said, well, UAE said, not yet, and I think they are right, until we are sure. So therefore, now, we will not change anything for the time being until we see something solid, really, and, and profitable. So you think the stability of the dollar peg serves the interests of the UAE? Yes, yes. And we still believe in that dollar.